What's up guys, I'm BTC, welcome back to The Respawn, where I answer your questions. Today we're talking the return of Torbjörn's level 3 turret, changing May into a tank, and more. Before I get into the questions, I want to give you guys a quick update. For those of you that have been around for a while, you know I used to stream almost every day, but a while back I stopped and I want to start that up again. It's probably not going to be every day, but at least a couple times a week. I'm going to live stream over on Twitch because I already have everything set up over there and I can play music there and I just can't do that on YouTube. As for the game, obviously there's going to be a lot of Overwatch, but I also want to try out Warcraft Classic. I used to play a lot of Warcraft and I started way back in 2005, right after I came home from a deployment. As you can imagine, you really don't spend a lot of money in a war zone, so when I came home I had some extra spending money and I bought myself a brand new computer and started playing World of Warcraft. And I was quite good at it, I could level a character from 1 to 60 in just a couple days way faster than most everybody else. I also ran a guild where we did end level raid content, but probably the biggest thing I enjoyed from old Warcraft was the world PvP. I used to solo raid Ironforge on my rogue, or Light's Chapel, and all these other places. It was just a lot of fun. In fact, the very first gaming videos I ever made were from that time when I was doing a lot of world PvP. Unfortunately, those videos have been lost to time. Now, I don't think I'm gonna make any Warcraft content for this YouTube channel, because I just don't think it's a really good game for YouTube videos, at least not in a let's play sort of format. You know, maybe you could do guides and stuff, but I don't know if I really want to do that. It's better for a streaming game when you can interact with viewers, and maybe I'll put together some highlight clips or something from the stream and then put it on the channel, but if you want to catch the live stream, then there's going to be a link down below. You can go and drop a follow there, and I highly suggest that you join the Discord server as well, because it will notify everyone whenever I go live. There's a special bot that's set up for it and also the discord server also has notification settings so every time I post a video on YouTube you'll get notified as well and this is important because let's face it the YouTube subscriber feed is terrible and oftentimes videos just don't even get put in there but you know if you're in the discord server then you get notified of every single video and the live stream so that's it for the update let's get to the questions First question, do you think Zarya should have two teammate bubbles like what they did with Junkrat? That's an interesting suggestion. I have heard stuff like that proposed before. I think it could work. It would push the character into being more of a tank and less of a bruiser, but it would absolutely require that they rebalance how the bubbles work because you couldn't just add another one. That would be way too strong. She would have a super high charge all the time and she would get her ult really, really fast. That just wouldn't be good. So if they rebalance the bubbles, they would have to look into the cooldown into how much they can absorb and also almost certainly they would have to reduce the amount of damage boost that Zarya gets from the absorb damage that the bubbles take but I think you could do it and it certainly would make the character more of a tank because she would be able to provide more protection reliably to the teammates as opposed to just kind of more of an emergency thing which is kind of what it is right now so yeah it, it could work it would require a lot of testing a lot of rebalancing next up do you plan to make a video on how to rework May into a tank hero? So this is something that I've actually thought of for quite a while about making May into a tank. I haven't really ever kind of sat down and thought of all the different things that would be required in order for this to happen, but I'll give it some thought and maybe kick around some ideas, and if I can come up with something that sounds like it would actually work, then I'll make a video on it, sure. Next up. Do you think Torbjörn's level 3 turret should make a return? This is kind of a tough one. I think it would be cool, but it would be really problematic, really difficult. Because the thing is, with Torbjörn, his turret, for the lower bracket players, it can be very frustrating and difficult to deal with. But for upper bracket players, the turret is kind of just a nuisance, right? It never really poses that big of an issue for those higher bracket, we're talking Master GM and, and the pro level players. The turret is just kind of like there, right? So if they were to buff the turret in order to give it the level three back, then it would maybe be a little bit better for the upper bracket, but I think it would cause a lot of problems for the lower bracket. But I do think the level three turret is kind of cool and it would be nice to have it brought back. So let's say for the sake of argument, they do bring it back. How are they going to do 
do it. Well, you could have it so that it automatically upgrades over time. When a turret has been around for a certain number of seconds, it just automatically switches over from level 2 to level 3. I don't like that idea though, because what would happen is, if a team is having a difficult time getting to the turret because it's behind a bunch of barriers, when it upgrades to level 3, it's going to be even more frustrating, and it's kind of a win more ability, and I don't like that. You could then, instead, tie it to something like his overload ability, where it would function similar to his old ultimate, where you just activate it, and for a few seconds you have that. You could do that, but then they would probably end up having to nerf other aspects of the overload. There's some other ways where maybe when the turret gets a certain number of eliminations, it automatically upgrades for a few seconds or something like that. I mean, there's a couple of different things that they could do for sure, and it would be neat to bring it back because, I mean, it's in the game in some of the highlight intros and some of the other stuff. It just feels weird that it's not actually usable, right? So, I mean, it would be cool, but they would definitely have to balance it and figure out a way that it's not going to cause problems. Next up, should Blizzard expand on the customization in the game? Yes, absolutely. So, one of the things that was brought up was, can you use a weapon skin with a different character skin? And I don't really see why you shouldn't be able to mix and match. I mean, we can kind of already do that with the golden weapons, right? That You can change the, the look of the weapon, so I don't see that it would be all that difficult to do something like that, but I think they should add more customization options just in general, right? So, one of the things that people complain about a lot is the portraits because of this that or the other thing it would be nice if you could unlock portraits as an achievement rather than having it simply tied to your level yeah you could have the default ones just being tied to your level but you could add other ones that are interesting or that show off some achievement that you've gotten or, or whatever you could have that that would be neat you could also have all different kinds of weapon skins and that sort of stuff that would also be cool and there's just a lot of different things that they could be doing that they just aren't. I'm going to link a video on screen and down below. This is a full customization thing where I talk about how they can rework the golden skins and all that sort of stuff. So you can go check that out. Next up, what are some good plat Doomfist tips? I'll give you three. Number one, don't attack the enemy from the front. Always try to hit them from the side or from behind. Number two, if you can wait until your tanks and your other DPS and stuff engage the enemy, then they'll be distracted. They'll be focused on the rest of your team, which allows you to get in, do what you need to do, and then get out before they even know that you're there. So wait until the enemy is distracted, then attack. And number three, if you're going to attack, don't use everything all at once. You need to have some sort of escape mechanism. So you don't want to use all three of your abilities and then just be kind of sitting there in the enemy back line. When all of a sudden they realize you're there, they're going to turn around and they're going to destroy you. So if you rocket punch in, then you can use the uppercut and the slam to get out. Or if you use the slam and the uppercut to deal damage to the enemy, then you can use the rocket punch to get out. But always have some way of escaping from the engagement. Engagement, don't just use everything all at once. With the current state of the game, would you consider Overwatch fun to play? It's a lot better than it was, I'll say that. I used to play competitive pretty much all the time, but I just got so sick of dealing with throwers and levers and just having five DPS teams that don't want to work together and people not in voice and all this sort of stuff. It just got so frustrating, it didn't feel enjoyable in any way, shape, form, or fashion. So a lot of times, for the recent seasons anyways, I would just go into competitive, do my placement matches to get the points, and then that was it. Sometimes I would do that on the very last day of the season just because I, I didn't enjoy it. And now with Roll Queue, it's certainly better. It is definitely better. But Blizzard is still almost totally ignoring the thrower, the lever, and the smurf situation. And I don't know what they're doing, but there's so much potential to be had, and they're just ignoring some of the biggest, most glaring issues. And some of that does get really, really frustrating. But overall... Yes, I think the game is better and it's more fun to play, but there's definitely still some issues. Next up, would a map where you need a certain amount of eliminations to unlock the control point work? No, I don't think that would work at all. Let me ask you something. Do you find it to be fun in any way 
when you're attacking the second point of Hanamura or Temple of Anubis and the defenders are just stalling non-stop with Mei and with Hammond and Lucio and it's just non-stop stall fest. Is that fun? Because I'm guessing most of you probably don't like that. And if you had a control point that was based on eliminations, you would essentially end up with that. Both teams, or you know, if it was kind of like a normal control map, or if it was something more like a Hanamura style thing, you would just end up with the defenders constantly stalling. There would be barriers and ice walls and Hammond just going all over the place. Like, the goal would be to avoid the enemy rather than engage with them. I just don't think it would work. Next up, should the Archives missions have multiple endings? This is kind of interesting. Now, the problem is that Blizzard needs to put in a lot of resources in order to make those Archive maps, and I don't think they could really have multiple kind of cutscenes at the end for the different, a variety of different endings. However, I think what they could do is maybe if you finish it on easy, then you get, you know, a very kind of limited ending cutscene. And when you finish it on the harder difficulties, you get the full cutscene. Or what they could do is have it so that you have to play it with all four of the characters, right? So when you play it with the first character, you get part of the cutscene. When you play it with the second character, you get more of the cutscene. And then when you've played it with all four characters, then you get the full cutscene for the whole thing. So that could work. I mean, they'd have to find a way to do it so that it isn't just kind of like a, a chore or that it's annoying. But I don't think multiple endings would work simply because... I mean, let's face it, Blizzard doesn't have a whole lot of lore or story in Overwatch to begin with, and you can't really have different endings because it kind of messes with the canon. So I think revealing more would be the way to go as opposed to having alternate versions. Next up, do you think the next hero will be a shield buster to combat double barrier comp? No, I don't think so, unless it just happens to be a happy coincidence, I don't believe so, because Blizzard makes their characters in advance, it takes them between 6 to 9 months to make a character, and they already have the next 3 or 4 already planned out, right? And they're going to be in different stages of development, I'm willing to bet that the next character is already fully playable on internal tests for Blizzard, maybe even the character after that might be playable, at least in an early form, and then of course they, you know, they have artwork and, and stuff for the other characters already mapped out, what their abilities are going to be and all that sort of stuff, but I don't think that it would be a good idea for them to just turn around and make a character to directly combat the meta because that's not really a good idea because then when that meta goes away then that character kind of loses its purpose right so the short answer for your question is no unless it's just some kind of a coincidence so next up what do you think about a rework for barriers that would weaken them if there is more than one for your team so I don't think this is a good idea at all because you never want to have one of your characters get weaker because someone else is playing a particular character. I mean, there's a difference between certain characters not having good synergy with each other versus all of a sudden my barrier went from 2000 down to 1500 because you're playing such and such. And that's going to cause a lot of frustration. So imagine that you're playing as Reinhardt and your barrier breaks early because you have an Orisa on your team and then you end up getting taken out and you lose the point and you get all mad and all that sort of stuff because you had a weaker barrier and now you can get mad at the other person like why did you pick Orisa you should have just picked Zarya because then I wouldn't have gotten eliminated and this and I just it, it just seems like it would cause way too many problems and I don't think you should have any sort of kind of uh a weakness or any sort of lessening of your character applied just because someone is using something else now. Next up, how are your cats? The cat blobs. They're doing pretty good. In case you don't know, the cat blobs are two cats that I have. I actually got them also right after I came home from deployment. They just turned 14 years old. They're torties and they're really awesome. They have their own Instagram account, but I also post stuff on my Instagram as well. But one of the things with the return of the live stream is I often had a cat cam that had just video of the cats moving around or doing whatever they would do during the live stream. But the cats are good and they should be making a return. 
And that's going to be all the questions for this week. Thank you to everyone who submitted one. Remember, I post the question card for the respawn questions every Saturday on the community tab of my YouTube channel. And also, if you want to check out the live stream and join the Discord, all of those links will be down below. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to see more, subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Also, come hang out in my Discord server and my Twitch live stream. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters. If you'd like to see what kind of cool VIP rewards you can get, check the links down below. And remember, always, always blame the controller, because it's never your fault.